which doesn't matter so we'll just we'll continue with the uh, presentation here right so yes you can see your screen Get yours organized first, Taman Baba. Okay, fine. So we are continuing with the mechanism of actions. Okay, right. Fine. Now, as I had promised earlier, now the thing is, we are using a few set of hydrotherapy treatments for diabetes, right? So we are using a few set of treatments for uh, diabetes management, okay? So the mechanism of action, there is a separate scoping review that has been written by uh, Dr. Yoga Priya, right, and team. So which talks about exclusively the hydrotherapy management for type 2 diabetes. It's, it's kind of a scoping review. It's not a systematic review or meta-analysis of that sort. But still, it has got like a decent kind of evidences on how different temperature applications has an impact okay um to begin with to begin with what cold application actually does is browning of adipose tissue right now the browning i hope you have heard about this uh, white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue the difference between that is as the color suggests in brown adipose tissue uh, the browning is because of its increased thermogenesis uh, the brown adipose tissue has more mitochondria when it compared to white adipose tissue cells, right? So what happens is cold application increases the conversion of white adipose tissue to brown adipose tissue so that thermogenesis happens in the patient's body throughout. So that's going to um, that's going to be <coughs> excuse that's going to be helpful not just in weight reduction but also in increasing the glucose metabolism part. And one more thing is about the cold application also activates this a TRP M8. This is a temperature sensitive ion, um, usually stimulated by menthol. Like I, I've, I've thought about like most of the times, if you're eating chili, right? If you're eating chili, what happens is your tongue is burning, isn't it? Your tongue is burning. That's because of the taste buds, this, that, and other things. But if you are applying a chili powder on his skin, it burns there as well. It doesn't have a taste bud there. Right? Why this, this change is happening is because of this ion change and ion exchange and all those things. Likewise, for cold application, when you're keeping a menthol, like a, a mint polo or anything of that sort in your tongue, you're feeling that chill sensation. Likewise, anything related to mint, either it be a a cream or a soap or anything of that sort, you're going to feel that chillness. That is because of this TRP M8 activation. What this does is whenever you're, you're giving a cold application or menthol or ice or cold water, whatever it is, that is going to act or that is going to work via this TRP, sorry, TRP M8 ion activation, which is going to promote browning of adipose tissue. And the third thing is, uh, GLAD4 translocation, the glucose transporter 4 translocation happens naturally with cold application. Now, what are these glucose transporters are? Um, let us take a common muscle cell. The common muscle cell, when insulin comes and sits on the surface of the cells, right? So what we call as insulin receptors, it's going to come and uh, sit on the cell surface on the insulin receptors. That's going to cascade a set of reactions inside the cell and then it is going to open up a gate or a channel through which glucose enters. We simply, we say it as a lock and key. Insulin is like a key which opens the lock 
and then glucose is not going to enter via the keyhole like we are not entering into the house via the keyhole the key opens the door we open the door and we enter through the door isn't it isn't it we enter through the door we don't just enter into the door we don't go into anyone's house until and unless someone comes and invites us inside the house likewise a glucose will not cannot enter into the cell until and unless this insulin setting up a cascade of channels allows the glucose transporters to go outside and bring the glucose into the cell just just imagine glucose is very shy like if you're going to a marriage like if you're going to a new place you need someone to welcome you into the uh, into the marriage hall or somewhere right that's why we have like few people sitting or standing on the reception why why we have a reception desk is because to invite people to come in now this glucose transporter four it's like the uh, person sitting in the reception they are going to invite the glucose into the cell until and unless this happens there will be insulin resistance and few of the ways how that is done this uh, glut 4 translocation how it happens is one thing is with insulin insulin has got a direct impact the second thing through which it happens is <clears throat> is through the physical activity whenever you contract a muscle right whenever you're contracting a muscle either it be the iso or isotonic exercises when you're going to gym or isometric exercises when we are doing asanas the same thing happens muscle contraction which results in glucose transporter translocation now this happens with cold application as well okay glucose transporter translocation happens with uh, cold application as well and the next thing is and next interesting thing here is increased visceral circulation results in closure of atp sensitive potassium channels right AMP kinase, there's something called AMP uh, kinase pathway. This is all like cellular mechanism. I don't want to go very deep into that. Um, so what happens is whenever you're doing a physical activity, whenever you're contracting a muscle, it takes some energy. ATP, we all know ATP is the energy currency. We think glucose gives us energy. Glucose has to, after drinking glucose, it has to get digested, it has to get absorbed, assimilated, enters into the cell, where glucose gets metabolized and just releases ATP, which is the energy currency. I mean, even though we are getting salary, even though we are getting paid, we even though we are getting the stipend and other things, it's all in the bank. We have to go to ATM, get the money before spending it, right? So we can spend only ATP. We cannot spend glucose. So this ATP, it is that is needed for energy. So if we are doing exercise. You get energy that gets that gets spent. Excuse. That gets spent, so there will be lack of less money. So body would start to create it. Body would start to produce it. So that is going to create a set of uh, cascades, a set of reaction that's going to happen in the body, which would end up in possible, not just in uh, reducing insulin resistance, but it also possibly increases insulin secretion. Okay, I'm talking about cold application in particular. And and again, like the, the common thing, what we get in... Um, a typical textbook hydrotherapy thing, peripheral vasoconstriction followed by the uh, vasodilation of insect, that would have an impact on metabolism and glucose utilization. Okay, now these are the uh, common benefits what we see with cold application. But interestingly, interestingly, what, what I found was most of the beneficial effects of diabetes, which has been documented so far, is on the hot applications. Either it be the uh, sauna bath or the hot immersion bath or, or any other hot application. Uh, what studies have found that is they were found to be having, they were found to be more beneficial than the colder ones. Okay. Um, so the common pathway is via the heat shock proteins. Heat shock proteins is nothing but like, uh, when, when someone is in the heat shock, okay, heat shock, is, excuse like just like heat stroke, or even at high temperature things, body as a defense mechanism does a few set of things. One such thing is releasing of heat shock proteins. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> hot applications were found to increase the heat shock proteins. Now, this study, these are not naturopathy 
uh, th these were not done in naturopathy institutions or naturopathy related setups. Fine. So I've just taken this particularly so that we can uh, take it up to the, to our BNOS community as such. Because this is done with like on monkeys, on animal studies. These are animal studies, which mostly we don't teach in, in academic institutions. Right. So that is the reason I have just exclusively went for those evidences. Even when you're talking about Sangha Prakshalna, right? Sangha Prakshalna asked us how that's beneficial for increasing GI motility. We don't have any human studies to talk about how that increases GI motility. How these asanas are going to be beneficial for GI motility. How that bolus, um, like uh, the bolus water, salt water, saline water we are taking in, how that is increasing the GI motility. We don't have papers directly in yoga and naturopathy. For that, we need animal studies. Okay. So this is one such animal studies. So what they found was... Um, heat shock protein 70 with heated hydrotherapy treatments what they found was the heat shock protein 70 was found to improve now this hsp 70 okay this h this 70 it's all based on their um what to say based on the daltons like their atomic weight and other things they made it like 60 70 80 90 and things anyway these are all like set of uh, heat shock proteins they are instrumental in protein folding Protein folding, it is like, um, we know insulin is an, it, it's a, it's made up of chain of amino acids, right? It is like chain of amino acids, all the amino acids put together. We have this mala called as insulin. Now, now it has to be folded in certain way to make the insulin work in an effective way. Just like we are folding a shirt and ironing it with proper creases wherever is needed. Only if that is properly packed, we go to a shop and buy that, isn't it? So it has to be properly folded, properly ironed, properly creased. If not, <laughs> if not, we are not going to buy that. We are not going to use that shirt, right? If the protein folding is not proper, the cell will think this is not insulin. I'm not going to use this. I cannot use this insulin. That's what they say. We are not going to wear some crushed shirt if you're going for an interview or somewhere like very important place. If someone is giving a crushed shirt and say wear it, you're not going to wear it. Likewise, if the insulin is not properly folded, right? If it's not properly folded, cell cannot recognize it as insulin. Okay? That, hope you understand. If you don't understand, just put that immediately in the chat box. Right. Even if not now, we can clarify it later. So this folding gets affected when there is oxidative stress. OK, I mean, that is the point where like yoga comes into the picture, either the yoga or naturopathy. It's all integrated so close to each other. We are looking like yoga is a different entity and naturopathy is a different entity. So when we are just entering into hydrotherapy, the things, whatever we are seeing here, it can beautifully be um, connected with the yoga application. So the oxidative stress, we are going to use pranayama and other things. Okay, fine. Anyway, just coming back to hydrotherapy here. This protein misfolding can be overcome with this heat shock proteins. It has got wonderful anti-inflammatory property. Now, diabetes is a chronic inflammatory condition, chronic low-grade inflammatory condition. Okay. Now, what does HSP-70 does? Uh, uh, you can see here, heat therapy improved pancreatic responses to glucose change and tended to normalize glucose excursion. So that is, it improves, uh, we already saw like GLUT4 transporters, right? Likewise, there's another transporter, GLUT2 transporters. That is, when there is increased blood glucose levels, it will immediately communicate to the pancreas. It will immediately communicate to pancreas saying, uh, secrete more insulin. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> secrete more insulin or produce more insulin. The response will just go out immediately. Okay, right. So it will be beneficial in improving the insulin release as well as <clears throat> reducing insulin resistance because of its anti-inflammatory property. All right, now the habitual hot tub bathing. Hot tubbing bathing in the sense we're talking about like full immersion bath. Full immersion bath was found to have uh, some effect on blood glucose levels, obesity, and also diastolic blood pressure. Okay, 
and sauna bath, hot tub bath. Like what what they found was both sauna bath and hot tub bath were beneficial, right? So what is the ideal temperature? They found like eighty to hundred degree for wet sauna. For hot tub bath, uh, make the temperature like at around like forty degrees centigrade, and time you can fix it around fifteen minutes for a, for a duration of three months. It's gonna get give beautiful results, so, right? So that is what like this review actually spoke about obesity and diabetes, and the mechanism of action. They've just beautifully put forth like uh, the whole thing uh, in this one picture or the one diagram as such. Like right? so, the people are sitting in a sauna bath. Fine. So here, what happens is one thing. What we saw is heat shock protein. Okay, take a screenshot of it, please. Um, this heat shock protein, it's going to increase the insulin signaling. It's going to increase the insulin sensitivity and thereby reduce blood glucose levels. Simple and straightforward. One thing. Second thing what it does is, as I already told, AMP kinase pathway. That is, if ATP is reduced, if the cash in your hand is getting reduced, then what you have to do is you have to go to ATM and get the money or, or you have to start generating new money. I mean, you have to start like... Uh, uh, what is it? Start working and generate new money. So that part is happening here at the AMP kinase pathway. AMP is adenosine monophosphate. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. So this monophosphate is looking for two more phosphates to make currency. Okay. So what happens is this kinase, AMP is like adenosine monophosphate. Kinase is it is less looking for two more uh, phosphate to make an ATP. Right. So this it's going to break down lipids I mean, that's going to break down fat I mean, to put it in the simplest word that's going to reduce the body fat and that's going to reduce inflammation okay this hsp directly going to reduce the inflammation as well via nf kappa b pathway and the uh, jnk jung pathway and other things it's going to reduce the inflammation right and one more thing is because of the sheer stress because of the heat just because of the heat nitric oxide is going to get produced. And I think there's someone has drawn a line over there. So nitric oxide synthase, it's going to get generated. Nitric oxide, <clears throat> nitric oxide again, nitric oxide synthase, there are three nitric oxide synthase. One is endothelial nitric oxide synthase, which is beneficial for wound healing. Neuronal nitric oxide synthase for your neurons and other things. The other one is INOS. Induced or inflammation related nitric oxide synthase. Now, this heat application is found to increase nitric oxide. We all know nitric oxide as um, a potent vasodilator, right? And that is the reason when you're keeping heat, what happens? There is redness. Why is this redness happening? Because of nitric oxide. Okay. So, that heat is setting up a few set of chemical reactions. One such reaction is your. Uh, nitric oxide coming into the picture. Now, what does nitric oxide? It not just dilates your blood vessels alone. It by itself going to stimulate your heat shock protein. This is going to stimulate your AMP kinase pathway and PGC1-alpha pathway. It's going to uh, improve the mitochondrial biogenesis, which is nothing but browning of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue keeps accumulating more and more and more and more fat, right? At some point, that has to burn as well. That has to burn as well. So what this mitochondrial biogenesis does is it is going to, uh, what to say? It is like creating burners throughout the body. Like there's fire everywhere. There's, every cell is going to burn, 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 burn. Automatically, fat cannot accumulate within the cell. That's going to reduce body weight. Once the body weight comes down, automatically inflammation, it's going to come down. right? And the other thing is what nitric oxide is going to do is it's going to increase the uh, glucose transport. Glucose transport, we are talking about insulin resistance part. Okay. So insulin resistance is going to come out, I mean, come down with uh, nitric oxide. And what we also know is nitric oxide is also beneficial in reducing or overcoming the complications of diabetes. Okay. So this nitric oxide is called multiple role. And what we found was, I'm sorry, and what they found was, heat to be beneficial in these multiple pathways like heat applications and one thing i've highlighted here heat therapy respecting the contraindications can be safely used with sedentary 
uh, patients who are sedentary and unable to perform uh, exercise, obese and diabetic people. Always keep in mind of the contraindications. Whenever we are starting with an intervention, now what contraindications we are talking about here? Okay, what contraindication we are talking about here is that <clears throat> diabetes patients, diabetes patients, um, their reaction, okay, the circulatory response is generally impaired. That is, if you are giving a cold application to a patient, so that is action phase, that is reaction phase. But, but in a diabetes patient, that reaction phase is diminished by 50%. Okay, by 50%. So, please be careful. Though. And one more thing is about the neuropathy. Patient cannot feel the heat. They, mean, they will say like, it is only tepid, it's only warm. No, I can bear the heat. You can increase the temperature. I don't feel like any heat. Whether you're giving an infrared, whether you're giving any hot application for that matter, please, please, please use a thermometer when you are dealing with a diabetes patient. Don't trust like your instinct or your hand, their hand, their sensation, nothing. It's better to be safer than sorry. Okay, it's better to be safer than sorry. Always use a thermometer whenever you're giving a hydratic application to a diabetes patient because they can't feel or they cannot sense it. And even their um, circulatory response gets diminished. So, so I mean, the main thing is whenever you're giving a cold food bath for a diabetes patient, you have to rub the feet for reaction phase. Don't think like the when they take the leg out, then again the cutaneous vasodilation is going to happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. The moment you put them like in a cold, um, what is a cold food bath for some reason, I don't like many are using whether cold food bath or not. I use that uh, generally. When you're giving a cold food bath, when they're taking the food out, for normal healthy individual, the feed is going to turn red shortly because of the reaction phase. But for a diabetes patient, it's going to remain pale white until and unless you give the, uh, you rub the feet. Second thing, whenever you're giving a cold hip bath, Again, you have to give it with friction. Textbook thing. Textbooks are absolutely scientific, right? For some reason or the other. <laughs> Excuse me. Like 7 out of 10 times, they are very much scientific and they are there for a reason. Cold hip bath has to be given with friction. So one is for the circulatory response. The other is we are talking about like uh, five pranas, right? For apana, this friction is very much essential. To activate an apana when you're sitting in cold hibad, this uh, cold hibad with uh, friction is very, very important. And the third is avoid heart application if you do not have a thermometer in a clinical setup. Okay. If not, if you are going to check the temperature by yourself. Not, I mean, allow the patient to judge whether they can bear the heat or not. Okay. So that is that is mostly about the uh, hot applications as well. And we have, I think we have touched upon both cold and hot application. And this is the, I mean, as far as I know, this is the only cold hip bath uh, study done on diabetes patients, published one in PubMed up until like one year back. I mean, I haven't seen this one year. Up until 2022, this is the only cold hip bath and diabetes paper published. Right? We have a lot of scope to publish all our beautiful work that we are doing in the clinical setup. And this got published like this journal, the impact factor is 7.5. Okay. It is not that you are doing like cold hip bath, GH Pagano, I'm doing a very small study. Will that get published or will that go to a PubMed index journal? Forget PubMed. Now, this is PubMed index and goes into mainstream diabetes journal with impact factor of 7.5. People are ready to accept whatever we have found. The thing is, we are like downgrading ourselves whether I can do, whether it is possible to do and all those things. Fine. And the mechanism of action discuss it's, it's over here. And to conclude, just to kind of summarize it, hot application works by regulating the heat shock proteins and elevated heat shock protein 70 leads to a reduction in inflammatory signals as well. And in the pathways, uh, we, we've seen the whole array of pathways, right? The flowchart kind of thing. 
And finally, nitric oxide levels. Nitric oxide levels is one another amazing thing which happens with the hot application that's going to be beneficial in diabetes. Thank you. Good. So as promised, we have finished it by nine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, how does cold uh, food bath help in diabetes? So that's one direct question asked. Cold food bath has got nothing to do with blood sugar levels, right? Uh, cold food bath has got to do more with neuropathy. Okay, so neuropathy just to, uh, to improve the burning sensation and other kind of sensation what the patients has, that would be very much beneficial. And if you're giving with friction, that is going to restore a little bit more of uh, <clears throat> circulation as well. Possibly with possibly with enos as well. Okay. Okay, good. So Dr. Yoga Priya is here as well. Right. So any any questions or doubts you have, just kindly put it up here. Okay. Now, um, yes, I just put for hot and cold together now. The same paper, Dr. Yogapriya has put the third one. How it happens when both the applications are given at the same time when talking about the GH pack. The results now again, like um, what is the difference between GH pack and renal pack? I am not completely convinced with that answer. Okay. So what it says is when you're giving hot application at one end and the cold application at the other end, the circulatory effect like dilates. This constriction is going to push things inside. Dilation reaction ways, it's going to push things inside. At the adipose tissue level, <clears throat> at the adipose tissue level, what we are expecting is glucose metabolism getting improved. Okay. As simple and straightforward, glucose metabolism